Yeah, my dad, he was driving by a disc golf course and saw a basket and asked a friend what it was. And they told him about the sport, it's disc golf, and he quickly became obsessed with it. And so he started taking me out. It was it was his fun, his his like playtime, but as I got older and older, I just became more and more addicted to it. And um, you know, my endurance for playing as I was six, seven, eight was I was playing a full round and then I started playing tournaments when I was like eight years old. I didn't really expect it to be like a, a career, definitely not at that age. And going back to when I was eight, you know, and playing my first tournament, you know, I just thought it was fun. You know, some kids play soccer, some play baseball, and I was just playing disc golf. My first tournament on the road was the Beaver State Fling at the time, and I lost by one stroke. I remember that moment stuck out to me just being like, wow, I can really do this. You know, I can I can really win these big tournaments against top pros. And then when I won my first major, it was the 2011 World Championships in Santa Cruz, California. And even though I had had that feeling at the Beaver State Fling that I can do this, you still had to prove it to yourself and, and to everyone else. And my dad had the faith in me, but I didn't yet. And neither did the disc golf world, you know? I'm just this kid. Truly like an unbelievable moment of, wow, I am a world champion at something. You know, this thing I've been doing with my dad since I was just a child is now a career. So it was just surreal. What I love the most, there's so many awesome things, but I think the number one thing is just like watching the disc fly. Yeah, it's cool, the people you meet, the courses you go to, the, the differences in form, all that. But really, when it comes down to it, every single time you're playing disc golf, like, you're amazed of the flight of the disc. And like, yeah, that's, that's just the root of it all for me. I'm 32 years old and uh, I went on tour when I was 19 and I've never had an injury until now. Less than 24 hours before my injury, I was like running across this road and Alyssa, my fiance was, don't run across the road when we have kids. Like we're not gonna allow our kids to run across the road cause you could fall and then the car runs you over. And I was like, I don't fall. Like when is the last time you saw me fall? Then it was literally 24 hours before it happened. I was uh, at the disc golf course getting ready for the tournament in Norway. There's like this little walking bridge on hole seven. It was 8.15 in the morning, so it was kind of like dewy and the bridge was like a little bit wet. And I remember the moments like right before I went over the bridge, thinking to myself like, wow, that looks slick. It didn't have handrails. And so I remember right before I went over it, thinking to myself, like, just take your time going over it. I was like three quarters of the way over the bridge and it was like my last step off the bridge and my left foot slipped out from under me. The whole body weight landed on my ankle and I broke all three bones and no more disc golf since then. Instantly, I'm dropping out of the tournament and what month is it, July? Uh, I'm not playing Worlds. Like I knew instantly. Uh, there's nothing I can do. It's not like they're gonna tell me how to get better and I'm gonna maybe play Worlds like I knew instantly. So like all of the devastation came at once, you know, the the physical like pain I was in, but also like season ending and maybe career ending and knowing that, hey, I'm hurt right now, but there's gonna be a lot more to this. All of that just kept adding up and just like further extended the heartbreak basically. For that first month, I couldn't put any weight on it. I needed someone to do everything for me. You know, at a certain point, it was like I wished it was my arm because then I, I could at least walk by myself. And then getting the boot off and realizing how far I still had to go, that was another challenge. Going to the physical therapist the first time and having her say, wow, we got a lot of work to do. Uh, it was just like, dang, you know, every step of the way feels like a little bit backwards before I can go forward. Just like hearing that, it's like, we still do got a little bit to go, huh? I guess overall, the absolute biggest challenge has just been patience and like trust. It felt really nice to be here and to experience finding joy and like just washing the dishes and having like a sink that actually has hot water. You know, that's all about this. Literally all of it just keeps tying back to it. And it's the same lesson I'm learning over and over. It's like, it's all about perception. Like you can be happy to be doing the dishes and doing yard work, or you can be like, ah, oh, this is just another chore. I got to do another thing on my list. And every new movement I'm doing in physical therapy, it's just like, are you sure? I can do that and just having to learn to trust that and then also yeah just being patient the whole time it's just 
testing my patients and I'm a very anxious and like gotta be moving kind of person so that's been really tough. I wasn't thinking about how I walked before this. You know, you don't think about how you breathe, like you just breathe. You don't think about walking until you're hurt and then you're like, wow, how do I do this? You don't know how good you have it until you don't. It puts everything into perspective, like instead of like having to do something, it's like, oh no, let me clean up the dog poop. Let me do the dishes. Let me mow the yard. Let me go practice. It's honestly just like a blessing in disguise because it's like a wake up call, you know, to not take anything for granted. And just like, it's just about your perspective. I'm lucky to be doing those things. Even if like in the moment, ah, I don't really want to do that right now. Like, would you rather be busted up on this couch, sitting there dying for a new show to come out on Netflix? I've thrown a couple discs, I've putted a couple times, but even now I still can't push off my back leg really. So when that finally happens, just realizing like it's a privilege to be able to play disc golf. It's a privilege to be able to walk out of the house and go do anything, you know? And so it's been my biggest lesson to, to not take anything for granted. Watching disc golf on coverage, you get to see every single shot they throw. So in a way it's kind of allowed me to be a cheerleader from the sideline and to be able to watch those shots and to be able to find inspiration and like watching tape. I'm allowing myself to have those moments of FOMO or wishing I was there, wishing I could do that, wishing I could be that. At the end of the day, I, I'm gonna learn from this as well and I just have to be patient. It definitely makes me feel like I gotta get back out there. If I'm not winning, I gotta at least be putting some pressure. You know, I gotta put myself in positions. I'm a competitor. It's just been since I was eight years old, you know? Like, that's all I know. I wanna win, I wanna, I wanna play my best, and it's a feeling I've been missing. The equipment's not gonna lie. I think disc golf really puts you know, our equipment to the test. Having discs that you trust, having footwear that you trust, you don't think about all of those small things and for you to trust it and have patience to become a champion and to find success. After this injury, I really can appreciate how every little thing is not so little. Every single piece of the puzzle has to be perfect to find success in this sport.